Welcomes to Movie Recaps, today I'm going to explain psychological thriller film The Game. Wealthy investment banker Nicholas Van Orden, estranged from his ex-wife and his younger brother Conrad, is haunted by having seen his father commit suicide on his father's 48th birthday. For Nicholas's own 48th birthday, Conrad presents him with an unusual gift, a voucher for a game offered by a company called Consumer Recreation Services CRS, promising that it will change his life. Though doubtful about CRS, Nicholas meets fellow bankers who enjoyed the game. He goes to the CRS offices to apply, but the lengthy and time-consuming series of psychological and physical examinations required irritates him, and he is later informed that his application has been rejected. Soon Nicholas starts believing that his business, reputation, finances, and safety are endangered. He encounters a waitress, Christine, who appears to have been endangered by the game. Nicholas contacts the police but they find the CRS offices abandoned. Eventually, Conrad appears at Nicholas's house and apologizes, claiming CRS has attacked him. With no one else to turn to, Nicholas finds Christine's home, discovering she is a CRS employee and her apartment was fake. When Christine says they're being watched, Nicholas attacks a nearby camera, and armed CRS personnel swarm the house and fire upon the pair, who flee. Christine tells him CRS has drained his bank accounts using the psychological tests to guess his passwords. Panicking, Nicholas calls his bank, gives a verification code and is told his balance is zero, realizing she has drugged him. As he loses consciousness, she admits she is part of the scam and he made a fatal mistake saying his verification code. Nicholas wakes entombed alive in a cemetery in Mexico. He sells his gold watch to return to the US, where he finds his mansion foreclosed and most of his possessions removed. He is told Conrad has been committed to a mental institution due to a nervous breakdown. He retrieves a hidden gun and seeks his ex-wife for help. While apologizing to her for his neglect, he discovers Jim Feingold, the CRS employee who conducted his tests, is an actor working in television advertisements. He locates Feingold and forces him to find the real CRS office. He takes Christine hostage and demands to be taken to the head of CRS. Attacked by CRS guards, Nicholas takes Christine to the roof and bars the door, as the guards begin cutting through the door, Christine, realizing Nicholas's gun is not a prop, frantically tells him it is a part of the game, his finances are intact, and his family and friends are waiting on the other side of the door. He refuses to believe her. The door bursts open, and Nicholas shoots the first person to emerge, Conrad, bearing an open bottle of champagne. Devastated over accidentally killing Conrad, Nicholas leaps off the roof but lands on a giant air cushion. He is greeted by Conrad, who is alive, and the rest of the people from the game, everything had been staged. Conrad tells him this is his birthday present and that he arranged it to help Nicholas become a better person and embrace life. After a birthday party with friends, Christine declines Nicholas's offer for a date as she has another job in Australia. She offers instead to have coffee with him at the airport. Movie ends in that scene please like share and subscribe, other movie details and facts. The game began as a spec screenplay written by John Brancato and Michael Ferris in 1991. It was sold that year to Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, who put the project in turnaround, where it was picked up by Propaganda Films. Director Jonathan Mostow was originally attached to the project with Kyle MacLachlan and Bridget Fonda cast in the lead roles. Principal photography was to start in February 1993 but in early 1992, the project was moved to Polygram Filmed Entertainment. Mostow was no longer the director of the film but instead became an executive producer. Producer Steve Golan bought the script from MGM and gave it to David Fincher in the hopes that he would direct. Fincher liked the various plot twists but brought in Andrew Kevin Walker, who had worked with him on Seven, to make the character of Nicholas more cynical in nature. Fincher and Walker spent six weeks changing the tone and trying to make the story work. According to David Fincher, there were three primary influences on the game. Michael Douglas' character was a fashionable good-looking Scrooge, lured into a Mission Impossible situation with a steroid shot in the thigh from the sting. He said in an interview that his film differs from others of that kind because movies usually make a pact with the audience that says, we're going to play it straight. What we show you is going to add up. But we don't do that. In that respect, it's about movies and how movies dole out information. Furthermore, Fincher has said that the film is about loss of control. The purpose of the game is to take your greatest fear, Put it this close to your face and say there, you're still alive. It's alright. More revisions were made to the script, including removing a scene where Nicholas kills Christine and then commits suicide, because Fincher felt that this did not make sense.
In 1996, Larry Gross and Walker were brought in to make further revisions to the script. Fincher intended to make the game before Seven, but when Brad Pitt became available for Seven, that project became top priority. The success of Seven helped the producers of the game get the larger budget that they wanted. Then, they approached Michael Douglas to star in the film. He was hesitant at first because of concerns that Polygram was not a big enough company to distribute the film. However, once on board, Douglas' presence helped get the film into production. At the 1996 Cannes Film Festival, Polygram announced that Jodie Foster would be starring in the film with Douglas. However, Fincher was uncomfortable with putting an actor and movie star of her stature in a supporting part. After talking to her, he considered rewriting the character of Conrad as Nicholas' daughter so that Foster could play that role. However, Douglas didn't like the idea and requested it to change the character to his sister, which Foster found peculiar as Douglas is almost 20 years her senior and also appeared with her in Napoleon and Samantha, when Foster was 9 years old while Douglas was 28. Due to differences in opinions and also scheduling conflicts with Robert Zemeckis' contact, Foster could not appear in the film. Once she left, the role of Conrad was offered to Jeff Bridges but he declined and Sean Penn was cast instead. Later, Foster alleged that she and Polygram had orally agreed that she would appear in the film and when this did not transpire, she took out a $54.5 million lawsuit against the company. Deborah Kara Unger's audition for the role of Christine was a test reel consisting of a two minute sex scene from David Cronenberg's crash. Douglas thought it was a joke but when he and Fincher met her in person, they were impressed by her acting. Principal photography began on location in San Francisco, despite studio pressure to shoot in Los Angeles which was cheaper. Fincher also considered shooting the film in Chicago and Seattle, but the former had no mansions that were close by and the latter did not have an adequate financial district. The script had been written with San Francisco in mind and he liked the financial district sold money, Wall Street vibe. However, that area of the city was very busy and hard to move around in. The production shot on weekends in order to have more control. Fincher utilized old stone buildings, small streets and the city's hills to represent the class system pictorially. To convey the old money world, he set many scenes in restaurants with hardwood paneling and red leather. Some of the locations used in the film included Golden Gate Park, the Presidio of San Francisco, and the historic Filoli Mansion. For the visual look of Nicholas' wealthy lifestyle, Fincher and the film's cinematographer Harris Savides wanted a rich and supple feel and took references from films like The Godfather which featured visually appealing locations with ominous intentions lurking under the surface. According to Fincher, once Nicholas left his protective world. The review aggregator website Rotten Tomatoes reports an approval rating of 76% based on 62 reviews, with an average rating of 7. 4 tenths. The website's critics' consensus reads, the ending could use a little work but this is otherwise another sterling example of David Fincher's iron grip on atmosphere and storytelling. Metacritic gives the film a weighted average score of 61 out of 100 based on reviews from 19 critics, indicating generally favorable reviews. Audiences polled by CinemaScore gave the film an average grade of B on an A plus to F scale. Subscribe to watch more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like it really helps the channel. Thank you for watching.